Welcome to La Trobe University. My name's Linda Wannan. Today we are joined by Jan Libick, who's with the School of Economics. Jan's recently received a prestigious teaching award from the Australian Government, and we'll be discussing his highly successful philosophies in teaching. Welcome, Jan. Thank you, Linda. Thanks for having me. You're most welcome. So, Jan, um, tell us about your teaching philosophies. Um, look, I, I mean, I don't think it, there's anything so special about my teaching. It's, uh, it's that I really believe that uh, all this memorising and, and rote learning that a lot of our students perform, especially at the primary and high school level, is, is not the right way to, to get good teaching outcomes. Yeah. So I'm trying to really promote my students to, to go a little bit deeper and, and really um, enjoy the teaching rather than you know, studying before the exam. So I've, I've implemented uh, in my teaching, I've implemented some strategies to, to try to encourage them uh, to do that and to put the, the incentives to, uh, for them to do that. So that's, that's fairly good philosophy. Um, and with these, uh, these teaching methods of yours, you've produced various videos. Um, tell me about them. How do they help your teaching? Well, this is one of the aspects, uh, not the only one, but I, uh, the idea is to, to bring the material to life. I teach mainly economics, uh, and people have this idea that economics is really boring. It's about you know, shifting curves, and it's about, you know, it's about money all the time, and it's about greed. And I'm kind of trying to change this, this perception. So um, one of the ways to do that is to, um, to be able to use this beautiful setup here that we have at La Trobe, this studio. And I invite various policymakers, um, um, politicians, ec you know, prolific academic economists, and I interview them about various topics that, that relate to whatever we're covering in, in my classes. And the idea is to really just you know, put a different, uh, kind of more real world perspective on, um, on, on what we're covering so that the students see it's not just about, about the curves, it's not about the theory, but the theory can actually be applied to, to real world um, questions. Okay, that sounds sounds excellent. But there's this overarching concern about assessment. How do you deal with assessment? Um, well, assessment is a, is a big part of the story. It's a big part of the the incentives that you put in place. Um, I started off as as most uh, academics do, uh, which is you know having a midterm exam, having a final exam, and that's it. Uh, but what you quickly discover is that when you uh, turn up for the tutorial, the students are there and they basically just sit and wait. Um, for, uh, to receive another mini lecture. They don't engage at all. And the reason is that you know, if you don't have incentives in place so that they actually have to do work mm -hmm. at home, they, um, they, just, they just don't do it. So the first thing I did, I, I put at least, in, generally in my classes, I put at least 20, 25% of the assessment, sometimes more, on, on the tutorial component. So uh, every week, um, Students have a problem set, an assignment that they have to do at home. It, it consists of a lot of questions. Many of them are, are, are not questions that you can just copy paste from the textbook, but they have to go out uh, to various sources and, and, and research, or they have to watch one of the videos that I produce with, with the policymakers and answer some questions. And then they come, come in uh, with the problem set, uh, which you know, uh, is a certain part of the, the assessment. And then another part is, is for them to discuss it with, the, uh, with their classmates in the tutorial and then present it um, in front of the class. And that, that is a, an additional part of the, of the assessment. This, this is how it works every week. So they really have to, you know, if they haven't done the work at home, they, uh, they basically have nothing to, dis uh, to discuss. And they fairly early on, they realize that this is not the way to, to proceed. So they really have to do the work every week uh, for them to succeed. Okay. So discussion is quite important to you. Um, you're known for incorporating discussion within your classes, not just tutorials. What's all this about? Look, I, th I think there's a lot of research that shows that discussion is really essential. Um, um, this is one of the things that I do. In my first uh, lecture, um, I give students some research statistics. One of them is from uh, a book by Rose and Gold, 1992. And they show the percentage, so they've done some research and they show that if uh, uh, after 48 hours, after some kind of learning took place, students only remember about 10% of what they read and about 20% uh, of what they heard. Mm -hmm. 
So that's not a very effective way to learn. Um, however, if, if they actually discuss it uh, with their classmates, you're up uh, to about 70% uh, of, of remembering the, the, the content and understanding it at a, at a deeper level. And if, when you actually try to uh, teach someone, you're up to about 95%. So I, I give them these statistics to convince them that they shouldn't just work on the problem set uh, on their own, but they should get in touch with the, you know, they should have a learning partner and they should uh, uh, talk together about their answers and, and, and try to, you know, argue about them. This is, this is I think, the, the way to learn. And there's, there's actually research that shows that um, when, you, when you talk, our brain does a different type of uh, thinking than if you, just, um, if you just read or listen. Much, much deeper type of thinking. So this is kind of where really where true learning uh, is taking place, and I'm kind of trying to awaken that a little bit. And you're managing to incorporate that into lectures as well as tutorials. Oh yeah, that's that's harder. I teach some, you know, one of the first year classes macroeconomics that I teach. I have uh, about 400 students, but but you can do that. So I have these um, what I call uh, bus times. There's uh, generally one or two, sometimes more, uh, in each lecture. And these are kind of carefully prepared questions that I would prefer at the beginning uh, or prior to the class. And, and I get uh, the students to discuss them with the person sitting next to them or, or even a small group of, of two or three, three or four students. Um, and then after the, about two or three minutes of discussing, they basically report back to me and we have a more general discussion. So, you know, it can be done even in a large light setup. Obviously, there's a lot more discussion in the, in the tutorials that have about 20, 20 students or so. Uh, plus, the discussion component is, is also, uh, you know, it, it actually um, follows the lectures as well. So we have the, the online management system, like Moodle or whatever mm -hmm. uh, the university is using. So we can, uh, I generally take the discussion topics that we've had and, and post them online uh, with, with links to various other articles that they might want to read. And the students can kind of continue these discussions, um, you know, even, even after, after the class. And, and again, the idea is for them to, to really think about the topic, not just from a theoretical perspective, like a boring textbook kind of stuff, but more about, you know, how it relates to their life, how it relates to, you know, the decisions and so on. Excellent. So, so what other things do you include in your lectures? Um, well, I, um, I do various, I have things like competitions. Um, and the idea is to provide a bit of an extra incentives for them to uh, go beyond what's expected in the class. So I organize, you know, book vouchers and some chocolate prices. Uh, Ooh, chocolate. <laughs> uh, well, these are actually more popular than the book vouchers. <laughs> um, and and uh, so, so students can, can do an extra task and then there, there's a, a draw and some lucky students get these. So this is one of the things. Um, um, uh, what else? There's, um, uh, well, there's, <laughs> there are a few things. Uh, let me just think. Uh, I, I have various quizzes. So one of the tutorial components is a quiz that, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's not scheduled every tutorial. It's it's random, and the students don't know in advance when it will occur. Mm -hmm. But uh, the idea is again to give an extra incentive for them to to do the work because if they've done the work, they they generally do very well in the in the uh, in the quiz as oh, well. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I hear you've um, kind of gone back to basics with some behavioural like psychology, a kind of bribing of students. Um, can you tell us a bit about that? Well, I, I hear that all the time when, you know, when you start talking about chocolate uh, prices, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, is it is it bribing students? And, you know, it, mm -hmm. at face value, it, it may seem like that. But uh, um, I, I recently uh, read a, a, a very interesting parenting book. You might be surprised, but you know, I have two little kids. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. what you do. You read parenting books and mm -hmm. and and this one is, is is excellent it's called childwise and and uh, one of the things I learned from it is there's a there's an important distinction between a goal incentive and a bribe mm -hmm. um, so basically uh, the way they explain it is a goal incentive is you know if you offer some reward for the child to kind of engage in some activity uh, that will lead to some long-term uh, benefit in terms of some uh, long-term skill I mean mm -hmm. if you say I'm going to buy you a, um, a, a soccer ball if you learn how to swim, if you practice and practice and learn how to swim. That, that's a goal incentive. That's not a bribe. Mm -hmm. a, a bribe is something that you offer uh, that it, 
has some kind of moral uh, nature, and that's something that that the child should be doing anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, don't don't hit your brother. I mean, yeah. you know, and I'll give you I'll give you chocolate. That's clearly that's clearly a bribe. That's mm -hmm. that's wrong. So I like to think that what I do in my classes is more a like goal incentive because I'm kind of trying to. Uh, to incentivize students to invest in, in their learning and, and put a little bit more effort in and hopefully they develop some kind of long lasting uh, skills. But again, you know, if, if you think that's, you know, a chocolate uh, reward mm -hmm. is a bribe, then I, I probably won't convince you otherwise. Oh, well, good on you. Okay, um, so some of your subjects are thought to be uh, fairly technical and we all know that many students uh, have issues with basic maths. Um, how do you um, cope with that? How do you deal with that? Well, that's that's actually true, and uh, uh, and I'm not quite sure how that happens. Uh, you know, when you when you write an equation on on the board, yeah. uh, many students you kind of know you they have a, they have a reaction. They almost have goosebumps when when they see an equation, yeah. um, and. Um, you know that that actually prevents them from, from from learning that. You know it may be well within their mental capacity to to learn the maths that they need, but you know they just just the, the negative attitude they have already uh, stops them from from doing it. So I have this, I, I I have various techniques, but one of them is, and that's also one thing that I do in the first lecture is is that um, I I try to. Uh, show them that it's just a mathematics. A mathematics is just a, a, another language. It's just a different language, where um, you just need to ask for the translation of that particular equation into the language that you understand. So what I do, I, I pick a, a word in English in, in random, mm -hmm. and and basically just ask the students to come up and write that word in 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 a different language, whatever language they. Um, they may be able to speak, and you know, in Australia, it's a very multicultural society. So, what what we uh, what what I get sometimes is that you know, 20 or 25 different languages. It's it's actually quite amazing. Mm -hmm. And then then I ask the students to pause and 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 think about what you know what they would do if you if you came to a different country and they saw that dif that different word written somewhere on the on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they wouldn't try to memorize it, which is what students tend to do with equations. Mm -hmm. But they would, they would, you know, try to look up the meaning in the dictionary, a meaning into a language that they can understand. Uh, and so this is what I encourage my students to do. Whenever I have, um, well, for my first years, uh, whenever I have an equation in my slides, mm -hmm. there's always a sentence underneath that says, "What is the, what is the translation of this equation into your language, into plain." plain English. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of hopefully gets the students to pause and rather than just, you know, a memorize that equation, just, just, just to get them to, uh, to think about the, 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 the meaning. And, and generally there's this very simple meaning in, in most um, basic kind of uh, equations. And um, I understand that you sometimes incorporate jokes and even cartoons into your teaching. Um, how do you do that? Well, I've, yeah, uh, my slides are full of various cartoons. And it's, you know, a, a part of it is just to break up the momentum and get the students to, uh, uh, to, to relax a little bit uh, in the class. But, but uh, they, they're quite carefully uh, selected to, uh, uh, to, to always demonstrate the point, point that we we're trying to uh, we're trying to make in the in the material. So, you know, they're not there just just to be funny, but uh, uh, but they're there for a purpose. And you know, you mentioned uh, being funny. In fact, I'm unfortunately uh, I'm not very funny. Oh. And I, I I learned that the hard way. Well, I always had a suspicion, but I learned that the hard way when you know on teaching evaluations, students always there's like this open-ended question that says, um, you know, what. Um, what other comments do you have about this about this lecturer? Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, one one year, uh, one student wrote something like, "Oh, you know, Jan is a nice guy, and he tries hard, but you know, sometimes he doesn't realize that um, students are actually laughing at him <laughs> rather than with him." <laughs> and uh, uh, well, you know, and I'm. In fact, that kind of comment has has since uh, uh, been repeated. So it, it's probably true, and I don't mind. You know, uh, mm. as long as the, the the students are learning, uh, that's uh, that's what matters. And you know, mm. I, I really believe strongly that, and and this is this is uh, I think what 
my teaching kind of approaches, uh, how it's different from, from others uh, or from some other people. I, I really believe that we all, as human beings, we have this really uh, inner need to learn, you know? It kind of, mm -hmm. I, I can see it in those little kids. They, they just have to discover everything and they just ask, you know, thousands and thousands of questions. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, you know, um, you know where, and it seems that the standard kind of educational system uh, kills this, this inquisitiveness, this what I call thirst, um, thirst for knowledge. And so a part of my approach is really just to motivate the students and to show them that there is this thing, you know, that, that they can actually enjoy it. It's not like a struggle. It's actually something that they can really embrace and, and have fun with. And, mm -hmm. and um, so that kind of hopefully goes a little bit beyond just the economics and material. It just um, uh, maybe shows them a, a way of you know lifelong kind of uh, learning, um, okay. and again you know many uh, many of my economics colleagues would probably frown on that notion of of us being more than just you know someone who delivers the content and teaches the the theories and so on. But I really believe that you know what you as the, as the lecturer bring bring in uh, is is quite important. I actually uh, had a guest. I also interviewed uh, someone about. Uh, effective uh, teaching and learning, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Carrie Howells from the University of Tasmania. And she, you know, she, she, um, she recently wrote a book about, about these things, how your innermost attitude as a, as a teacher, how it kind of flows onto the students and how it, how it can greatly improve the, the, the learning experience of the students. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, you, if you're grumpy and you think about all the things you need to do and you just rock up for the lecture, you know, it, it shows, and mm. and, and the, the lecture is generally very flat because you're just not being, you know, you're not taking them on a on a ride. So that's that's what I try to do. But and that sets us beautifully into our next question, which is, how do you set up the students' expectations of themselves? How do you do that? Uh, well, that's that's actually not not uh, easy, and um, I I worked quite hard on this. So I. First thing in my subject guide for every every uh, subject, yeah. I'm very very clear about what the students um, you know uh, are required to do, what what they can expect from us, yeah. and it's all spelled out. And I, I make it imperative that the students actually read read the guide so that they from day one mm -hmm. they they know what's coming, and 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 then in uh, in uh, in the first uh, couple of lectures. I actually talk uh, talk about that uh, the fact that the, the subject is is fairly high, uh, very technical and, and uh, fairly difficult. So uh, and a lot of work will be required, you know, weekly problem sets and, and so on, hours and hours of uh, of, of homework. Mm -hmm. uh, so I encourage all the students who are not willing to um, or who are not capable of of doing all this uh, to withdraw from my subjects. And mm -hmm. if they, you know, if, if they're not core, they, they can withdraw and go do something that might be easier. And I don't, I don't mind. I understand that many students might have, you know, work commitments and so on. But, but uh, you know, I make it very, very clear at the beginning that, you know, a lot of work will be required. So one of the, one of the things I, I have is uh, in the first few, you know, assignments, the last question is always, um, how long did this um, assignment take you? Mm -hmm. And then break, broken up into, you know, how, how much uh, time did you spend writing uh, or reading the textbook? How much time did you spend writing? How much time did you spend discussing with, the, with, the, you know, with your classmates? Mm -hmm. And then the next question is, well, do you think you'll be, you'll be able or willing uh, to do this every week? Mm -hmm. um, and if they answer no, then they should come and see me so that we can discuss some alternative options. But, uh, you know, they always have the option of just... You know, withdrawing from the uh, from the subject and, and and doing something doing something different. And you do that very early on in the semester. This is this is you know from the first lecture and then second lecture and the, the, you know the first few weeks I keep repeating the same story over and over again. How important it is to to work, um, how important it is not not to memorize, not to rely on the. So so another thing I have in in my uh, uh, first um, week slides is that I. I show them how they, they should approach the assignments. Mm -hmm. Well, first we discuss it in the lecture, and, and generally what you find is that, that students just read, you know, they would read the question, they go to the textbook, and they would just, okay, well, this is the answer, copy-paste. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and obviously it wouldn't would, wouldn't even <laughs> go through the brain. It's <laughs> just from here to there. Mm -hmm. um, so I tell them, no, just read the textbook um, and read the question and just don't, without relying on the textbook, you just try to use your own words and, and give an answer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, obviously you may still, it may not be perfect. So you do that again, you go mm -hmm. to the textbook you read it and then without relying on the textbook, so kind of like under exam conditions, you try to improve, okay? And you do it two, three, four times, and then the next step is, is discussing with, um, with your classmates and having a, you know, a, a, a very lively discussion about, you know, a what, if, what if the assumption is like that? And what if this word changes? And, you know, really the idea is to, um, to try to, you know, get, get them thinking about it at a, at a, at a more, more deeper level. Another thing, actually, um, I have to um, is, at the, and this is at the end of very, every um, uh, assignment, mm -hmm. is there's a last question that says, "Now pause for a moment and write down one or two good questions about any of the topics covered in this assignment." Mm -hmm. And I, I explain to them. Uh, there's a quote, um, uh, basically uh, saying that you know asking questions might often be more important than being able to. To answer them. So again, this is just just another way of, of trying to get them think about the relevance of those things and or whether there's any gaps in their understanding mm -hmm. or the way they can communicate it. Um, and you know, to what extent it helps, I'm not so sure. But uh, anyway, okay, that's hope. Sounds good. Um, so at the moment, there's a lot of talk within academia about curriculum, curriculum development, and. There's a lot of theory out there. What are your ideas about this constructive alignment? Um, it's, it's a, you know, you're right that there's a lot of um, uh, kind of movement in that direction. And uh, um, it, is, it is certainly a good thing to, um, to get academics to think about their teaching. Okay. And, and you know, I, 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 unfortunately, there are many people who would just teach the same subject exactly the same way for, for many, many years without any kind of changes. Um, so, so, you know, if, if you get those people to really think about what they're doing and think about their assessment and, and, and you know, about various things, that would be a good thing. I think you can, you can uh, take it too far. Uh, one, one thing that I have, uh, and, and you know, the constructive alignment uh, idea, it's, it's very um, natural. I mean, the idea is, you know, you need to align whatever uh, you want the students to learn with, uh, you know, whatever the students are assessed on. I mean, it's, it's so simple. It's, it's almost trivial. In fact, the, the, the father of this idea, um, John Biggs, he, he himself would say, well, I don't know what this fuss is, is, is about. It's all common sense. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and I think good, good lecturers kind of automatically do, do, do those sort of um, uh, things. Uh, um, so so my, my problem sometimes is that it's, it's, it's at some institutions, it may be, it may go too far. You know, the, the, there's too much focus on, uh, you know, how, how the, uh, the subject guide is structured and, you know, having all the in, uh, uh, intended learning outcomes and all this. And, you know, you may spend hours and days on developing those things, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it may just be on paper. And, and the fact is that many students don't read the subject guide. So unless you really kind of, you really incorporate it in the teaching and, and the, the lecturer is really equipped to, to, to try uh, to deliver on those things. It, it may just be, uh, you know, it may not be very effective. So, so I would really, I'm, I'm a kind of more practical. I, I've been to many teaching workshops and some of them are useful. Uh, in fact, I've run many teaching workshops. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know to what extent they were useful. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, the, the, the bottom line is that you really wanna, uh, mm -hmm. These, these don't have a very good reputation amongst academics and, and partly it is deserved because a lot of the time it's just all these teaching, you know, theory stuff and, and, and words that, you know, we don't understand and students don't understand, but it's not so much, you know, practical tips about what you can change in, in, the, in, the, in the classroom, you know, in terms of the assessment and so on. So, you know, theoretically it's, it's a good idea, but it's, it's, it's about the implementation and I think, uh, you yeah. know, you can do it well, but you can also do it. So a good, well-trained subject all. lecturer is key to success with these things. Right, yeah. Yes. Okay, so um, in relation to that, uh, my understanding is that when you were doing your PhD, you were really heavily involved with a project, to, an education program. Tell us about that. 
It's, um, it was at the University of New South Wales, and they, um, I was approached by the head of the Education Development Unit, um, mm -hmm. who was working on various programs, not only tutor training, these are kind of fairly standard, but they were developing um, a transition workshop for students from, um, from high school that are about to start university. And we know that, that you know, the dropout rates are, are fairly high. Yeah. Um, and we know that many students uh, find it very hard to, to cope the first few months. Uh, you know, it's just very different. The, 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 the learning style is different. The environment's different. Now you have all this freedom and all this independence and yeah. all these other distractions that you might have in life. Yeah. So, th so this sort of thing, um, uh, many students just don't know how, how to deal with that. So what we did, we developed um, and then kind of delivered um, these, these workshops. In, in, they were in small groups of 15 to 20 students. Mm -hmm. um, it was just before they, they would start um, uh, university. Mm -hmm. And we would go through all those kind of tips about how to, how to succeed at university. We'd, we'd talk about, you know, how to study and how to what to do and what not to do, but but hopefully in a in a very engaging way. We talk about learning. One of the things we would talk about is 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 the uh, is is the importance of not just memorizing, but you know going going about it in a in a deeper way, the, the way we just discussed. But also things like you know learning and teaching style. What what you often have is um, um, a lecturer that might be too much of a, a detail person mm -hmm. um, in terms of you know the, he, he would just go straight into the material and talk about the very details of certain things and models and theories but but they may not tell you exactly uh, you know how the big picture works how it all fits with other things or it can be the opposite they, you know they're very big picture but they're the detail and the problem is if a student is the opposite so there may, may there may be a mismatch between what the student needs and what the lecturer is giving mm -hmm. um, uh, and that, that might be why, you know, the student is not, is not coping. So, so we gave them some strategies, what to do in cases like that. We had lots of fun kind of uh, plays. You know, this, this thing, for example, we, we, got, them, we got the students to, um, to do a puzzle. So in small groups, they each had a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And then they, they had to put the puzzle together, early, you know, faster than the other groups. And then we, you know, we debriefed and we talked about, you know, what, what was this demonstrating? And... And, uh, you know, what would, what would have made it easier for you to put the puzzle together? Um, in fact, we, we didn't let them talk about, you know, when they were doing it. Mm -hmm. So one of the things uh, that came out uh, was uh, that communication is important. Being able to talk uh, in, you know, in the group is important. The other thing that they, they realized is that they, we didn't give them the, the, the picture, we didn't, you know, that they were supposed to put together. Mm -hmm. And they realized, okay, well, if, it would have been much easier if, if they actually had that picture um, uh, in front of them so that they could, uh, you know, they, they, they knew where they were going. Mm -hmm. And it's very important in a lecture to, to, to tell the students at the beginning, you know, this is where we are, this is where we're going, this is why we're going there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you kind of get, get lost. So this is, this is one of the, I mean, there, there were many other, uh, it was very well received. Unfortunately, the, 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 the head of the unit left uh, and I left at the same time. So it, this only uh, uh, ran for two years and then there was no one to, to take it over. But, but students we, appreciated it. Uh, well, we had very, very good feedback. And mm, in fact, like some students still still keep in touch after mm, you know, uh, eight years and, and, and they're yes. saying how, how it's changed the way they mm. approached university. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, that's good. Yeah. That helps retention. <laughs> and talking yeah, about so retention, you get third-year students here who can be fairly critical by the time they're in their third year, and they um, give you um, some quite good uh, evaluations. Excellent, actually. 4.8, 4.9 out of 5, pretty mm. consistently. Um, tell us, um, how come? Well, look, this is... I don't... I, we should, I think, discount this. Uh, you know, teaching evaluations are probably not a very uh, accurate measure of... Uh, of teaching effectiveness, and, and you know, many people rightly uh, uh, say that uh, they're affected by many factors. You know, the, the size of the class, mm -hmm. um, you know, how technical the class is. Generally, you know, the more mathematical, the, the lower the evaluations. There's quite a lot of research on this, so I, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, put too much weight on it. I mean, it's nice to, you know, to get the to get the nod from the students, and I, I you know, it makes the job really uh, easier, and it gives you more um, 
uh, you know, more motivation for the future. But I'm not too driven by 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 these uh, valuations. It, it's it's maybe the the specific questions that that are you know worthwhile. So I what I try to do in my subjects is is to to really experiment. So every every semester I, I come up, I change things around, and I come up with different ways. And 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 most of it is is based on talking to to students um, mm -hmm. and asking them what works and what they might change. Mm -hmm. um, um, in fact, one of the one of the things I do after every exam, I have on on the online system, I have this what I call a reflection um, reflections thread, exam reflections thread, mm -hmm. where um, where I encourage the students to to um, talk about the exam experience mm -hmm. and you know how whether they did well and why and what they would have changed mm -hmm. about the way they prepare for the exam. Mm -hmm. And you know students uh, seem to find it very useful when they first they see that you know it was not just them who struggled, but they might have been other people. Mm -hmm. And then when you see you know what others are saying they would change, you're thinking, oh maybe I should change that too. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, this is this is one of the ways that you can you can um, get feedback and and maybe improve um, the teaching. So so on the evaluations, there's various things that you can trace uh, from year to year. Mm -hmm. um, you know how you're using um, whether the students get feedback on their performance or whether they whether you're using um, uh, you know the assessment correctly. Whether the assessment is linked to um, to the goals, you know, those, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, and it, if you see big changes over time, this is an indication that some of the changes you, you implemented in your, in your class may have actually uh, had a positive effect. But, mm. but overall, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, kind of over, uh, overemphasize the, the evaluations. Okay. So you've recently uh, won a very prestigious award from the Australian government. Tell us about your other awards that you've had over the years. Uh, well, I'm sure people can find those on uh, on my website if they want it. Uh, well, there's this um, uh, there's this lecturer of the year award, um, which, which is based on students' nominations, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I've kind of won it a few times now. But uh, look, it is, again, it's uh, it's nice to to win awards, but it's not really what, what, what's driving me. I, uh, I mean, I, I really, uh, the, the, the best reward is for, for students to, to change the way they, they learn and, and to realize that it's actually a fun activity and, and you mm -hmm. see the enthusiasm. So, so sometimes, and I, you know, I see students in my first year class and they kind of don't, don't do too much work and they don't get engaged. And then they, I see them two years later and they tell you that they, you know, they, they benefited from this and they changed. In fact, I, I for recently, was it, uh, well, it was earlier this year, I got an email from my um, past student um, who was here on exchange uh, and he did my third year uh, monetary policy class. Mm -hmm. and, and he's now doing his PhD back in Germany. And, and uh, you know, he said he, it really, well, first it, it got him to study uh, in, in the similar area and it got him to do a PhD and he's actually using a lot of the techniques in his teaching and he invited me to Germany so I, I visited him. Uh, uh, it was, it oh, was, that was, uh, it was nice. But, uh, so with your um, breadth and depth of experience in both teaching, learning and research, have you got anything else to share the viewers um, on your teaching and learning that you've been discussing today? Um, Look, I, uh, it's it's really. I think it's the the way um, the the lecturers approach the uh, the subjects uh, are, are very important. So one of the things, one of the tips I, I might share with with lecturers is is to always think about what they do just before the just before the lecture. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it really makes a difference if you just run in the class and mm -hmm. you know have so many things. You, you're not really focused on that class. But if you take the the ten minutes before and just kind of relax a little bit and just think about the class and think about, you know, um, kind of realize that that's a, that's a great opportunity that you have to step in in front of the students. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that you, you actually appreciate this opportunity and it's, you know, not taking it for granted. So this is one of the things I've, I've learned from some of the people I've, uh, I've met in the past that, uh, and you know we all have people who would influence your your teaching career who who acted as as, as role models and 
and and you know this is one of the things I've learned that you know how you how you what you think and how you approach a teaching can can really have a big big impact on 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 your students and how they how they're learning but um, you know let me let me think whether I can think of something um, something else one, one of the other things that I do um, in my classes is um, um, sometimes students can can get various bonus marks um, mm -hmm. and and the idea is you know if you don't do too well on the midterm exam some students again you don't want them to kind of uh, give up and 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 drop out you 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 want to sh give them a chance so one of the things I do is that they um, I, I um, all the students are, re are required to redo the mid-semester exam mm -hmm. as a part of the, uh, the tutorial mm -hmm. and then um, I, I don't tell them in advance but those who've done it uh, get get an extra you know bonus mark which um, you know, it, again I mean it, it's not a it's not it's not a big deal but uh, the, the general lesson is that you know if they work hard mm -hmm. there might be some pay off even even if they don't know in advance that that would uh, that uh, that would be the case so this is um, this is one of the one of the things um, yeah I, th I think with for one, really, it, one extra mark out of 25 makes a big difference to some students uh -huh. yeah, yeah and then there's others you know I um, some of those videos that I do um, yeah. and I just did um, just uh, two weeks ago um, I did uh, th three with former members of the board of the Reserve the Bank of Australia and you know very prolific uh, economists um, so sometimes I get my students to uh, watch these and you know sometimes there might be a little bit of a bonus mark uh, for, for those for those sorts of activities and, yeah. and generally you know I, I've set the standards quite high so the exams are not trivial they're fairly um, difficult yeah. you know they're kind of I think appropriate to the level of the students but but then they can you know a, s a couple of bonus marks can and make a bit of a difference and again you know is it bribing the students uh, I don't know I, <laughs> what it achieves maybe, the maybe a they goal, learn maybe a goal yeah. goal incentive that's that's, a, that's the way I like to I think I reckon of it. that's a great goal incentive it's a bit like cricket you know you might have a duck one time but you've got another chance yeah well really I, I, I'm afraid I'm <laughs> not very qualified to talk about cricket but I, <laughs> you know my two or three uh, uh, experiences uh, with it uh, I think are not yeah. enough to uh, but you probably know more yeah. than I do. Okay, well, um, thank you, Jan, for your time today, thank sharing you. your expertise with a wide, wide audience, and I uh, wish you all the best in, in your teaching and learning at, uh, at La Trobe University. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda.